Everybody needs to learn code, and coding is the new literacy. If you can't code, you will soon become obsolete. Plus, coding is easy, so you really have no excuse. These are all statements that are not true, but I've been told that fear-based sales tactics will scare you into subscribing to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to share a variety of practical techniques that have helped me learn to code, because learning in and of itself is a skill. And if you want to be a software engineer, you will need to learn new things all the time. Many moons ago, I didn't know how to code. I wanted to learn because I hated my low paying, miserable job and wanted to build some kind of app on the internet that would allow me to break out and start my own business. I figured I wasn't smart enough to code, but you only live once. So I bought a giant book about PHP and MySQL. And sure enough, I wasn't smart enough to code and those toilets weren't going to clean themselves. I went back to my crappy job and forget about it. I figured I was at least smart enough to learn HTML. And somehow, a few months later, I figured out how to ship my first website. The important thing to recognize when learning to code is that hard work is more valuable than talent. Talent is great where if you have it, and there are 10x developers out there where things just click on a much higher level. But programming is a skill very similar to playing a musical instrument or juggling. For most people, you totally stutch it first. Then you feel like a genius when you code your first programs. Then you realize it totally suck again. And this pattern goes on and on forever in an infinite loop. Learning. Learning is supposed to be painful. In fact, I believe that you need pain to grow. When learning a guitar, you need to put your fingerprints through a lot of pain before you build calluses. Now, as you learn, you might be wondering which programming language should I start with? But the truth is that it doesn't matter as as long as you get really good at one of them. The thing about programming is that it's so much to learn, you're never going to retain it all. I used to be a really good Ruby programmer, but at this point, I've forgotten almost everything about it. And that's not a big deal because memorizing syntax doesn't really matter. The thing you really want to learn retain are programming patterns. Essentially, everything you do in programming is problem solving. The idea is to create a repertoire of tools in your brain that you can use to solve virtually any problem in any language. For example, if you need to loop over something, but you've never used Perl before. You still understand the trade-off between a for loop, while loop, and recursion. This is the exact reason that when you go to a technical interview, they usually don't care much which language you use. They just want to see that you know how to solve problems. And in some cases, they may only have you write a pseudocode on a whiteboard to analyze your problem solving skills. So in learning, I would recommend trying out a few different languages and learn the one that feels most natural to you. Uh, for most people, I think Python is an ideal because it has minimal syntax, is extremely popular, and is also just a very useful language to know in general. But JavaScript, Go, Kotlin, and Swift are also good languages to start with. Um, but again, it's about becoming a problem solver, not about memorizing syntax. And that begs the question, how do I become a good problem solver? The answer is go solve a bunch of problems. Turn off YouTube and go write some code. Will you ever learn to play guitar by watching other people on YouTube play guitar? The answer is no. You also need to be playing the guitar along with them. Books and tutorials are great. Experience matters more than anything else. And luckily you're gonna get time in the saddle. All you have to do is sit your ass in front of a computer screen and hit the keyboard until something cool happens. Speaking of which, sitting on your ass in front of a computer screen is not natural or healthy, and that means you need to work extra hard in this line of work to protect your health, both mentally and physically. That's why I prefer to eat Arby's, the most trusted name in nutrition. I also get plenty of sunshine and exercise to offset of the time I spend banging my head against the keyboard in my mom's dark windowless basement. Now let's switch gears and talk about physicists named Richard Feynman. He's Nobel Prize winner, known for many things, one of which is his learning techniques. It goes like this. One, choose a concept you want to learn about. Two, explain it to a 12-year-old. Three, reflect, refine, simplify. Four, then organize and review. In other words, you learn most efficiently when you try to teach the very thing you're learning. I can tell you right now that I've learned way more about programming from running this YouTube channel than I ever did working all by myself. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody needs to do start the YouTube channel, all you have to do is pretend to teach something, but if you can't create valuable content out of it, like a video or a blog post that's even better, or if you've already to a job, you'll find that you learn a lot just by mentoring other people. And if you don't have a job, you can join programming Slack or Discord channels and help people out there or answer questions on Stack Overflow. Now that you know how to learn code, all you have to do is go to Google, type in what you want to learn, and let it be your guide. Because that's basically all you ever do as a software engineer. I'm going to go wrap things up there. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to get the next video in this installment about mastering the, the technical interview. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.